So you know how they always say to keep your friends close but your enemies closer? Not sure I agree. I did that with chocolate. Bad idea. In my defense, at times chocolate felt like more of a friend. And the same thing can happen with nostalgia. Ah, yes, nostalgia. Something we retro gamers know all too well. A fondness for things from the past, so you better believe video games are gonna be a candidate, because it's the things we liked best that trigger our nostalgia. Sorry, sweaty sandwiches that sat in a lunchbox for four hours. Nostalgia is an effort to fight back against letting go of things from from the past, instead going with a different option, not letting go. But when it comes to video games, it's not just about having the games we had as kids and playing them now, but more specifically, it's about the feeling they gave you. That certain type of joy you felt earlier on in life, yeah, get me some of that. When you think about it, it's pretty fortunate that video games are capable of giving us this feeling. After all, not everything we did as kids is quite as easy to do as adults. I've certainly spent my fair share of time lamenting the old days of after school super soaker battles. But now, most people my age don't get off work until at least five. They're too tired. It's starting to get dark and cold by then. Oh, and besides not enjoying getting blasted in the face with water, most other adults don't own super soakers. Go figure. So every now and then I think about this and it makes me kind of sad, which leads to the question, has my nostalgia gone too far? I mean, does this look productive to you? Reliving your past is great, but what about living your, you know, present? I mean, just think of the potential. When it comes to getting older, one of the biggest benefits brought up is that you can do whatever you want. Ooh, okay, let's see. I want to do stuff from my past. And here we are again. But so long as you're reliving your past in a healthy way, I think you should be fine. Doesn't need to be on a schedule or anything crazy. Just need to make sure it's not causing you to become resentful of how things currently are. And for many of us, it can indeed be useful in helping you be less resentful. Quick little story for you. One day I'm having a bad day. And I remember this one time when I was a kid where I decided to dance on top of my toilet. So I thought, hey, Hey, don't knock it till you try it. I promise it'll make you feel better. So long as you don't crack the seat or hurt yourself. Yeah, maybe find something else to do. For some of us, the amount of joy we experienced as kids is pretty hard to match. And especially when compared to life now that you're older, which can, well, kinda suck. At least certain parts of it definitely can. Nostalgia and engaging in things that make you feel nostalgic nostalgic can be a way to escape from the aspects of your current life that you're not so fond of, like talking to that one friend you keep meaning to stop being friends with. Retro games can be a trip back to simpler times, as they like to say. Playing Sonic the Hedgehog in my cousin's attic bedroom on a Saturday afternoon sure beats the pants off of, oh, I don't know, spending an entire day cleaning your home for guests arriving later that day. Remember what cleaning up before a friend came over was like as a kid, just quickly chuck any loose stuff into the closet or wherever and you're good to go. Simpler times. But here's where things can get tricky. How much is your fondness for older things, and let's just say older video games, attached to the games themselves as opposed to the nostalgia involved? And this is where I think there's a huge misconception about retro gaming and retro gamers. One that I've talked about before. For a lot of retro gamers, one of the most exciting things is to discover and play games and even consoles you didn't as a kid, and oftentimes they're games you had never even heard of when you were younger. Of course, a very simple counter argument to this would be to just say that those are merely an extension of the nostalgia you feel towards the older games that you actually did own as a kid. I mean, they're typically from the same period of time that you're nostalgic towards. When I play the original Rayman, it instantly takes me back to the bedroom I grew up in, 
playing late into the night with a friend, but I never owned that game as a kid. Either way, I think there's still plenty of objective reasons for playing older games like game design, tighter pacing, and you know, just fighting against people's tendency to cast aside older things because that's what happens to older things. Gosh, I can't wait to see what happens to me when I'm elderly. Here's the thing though, whether you're enjoying a game because of nostalgia attached to it or not, does it matter? Well, for enjoying that particular game for you personally, not really. It's more so how it shapes the way you think of other things. If things you enjoy partly from nostalgia are getting a boost from that nostalgia, it automatically puts everything else at a disadvantage, and this could apply to all sorts of things, whether it's newer games, newer movies, or newer parts of your life, aka your current life. If you're constantly comparing everything to something from the past that gets an automatic advantage, it can potentially make it harder to enjoy newer things. For some gamers, not liking modern games can be as simple as this garbage isn't the games I grew up with. Not to say there aren't more valid objective criticisms to be made about modern gaming, goodness knows I've pointed some of them out before, but I think where nostalgia can become your enemy is where it influences you to not even give something a fair chance, and potentially rob yourself of a great experience, which maybe you feel you're provided with enough great nostalgic experiences to make up for it, but hey, I'm just pointing out how there could be more. Sometimes people won't give newer games a chance that are literally trying to cater to their nostalgia. Oops. I suppose one possible argument against that is you feel like your fandom is being taken advantage of and manipulated. I've had this problem before. I would say that this needs to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis labor of love, or is there some cash grabbing going on in there? It can get tricky though, because sometimes it's hard to tell if some sort of nostalgia is affecting your judgment or not, in a way that is causing you to be unfair. Heck, maybe even unfair to your own wallet, as some people feel like their nostalgia has made them total susceptible suckers compelled to purchase things they don't need because their nostalgia drive demands it. One day you might wake up and realize, wait a second, I own the US, PAL, and Japanese releases of Resident Evil 3? I'm missing the greatest hits version. I'll just keep this on until it arrives in the mail. Now, maybe that's something that you genuinely enjoy. That's perfectly fine. The point is this. Don't let your nostalgia boss you around. That's what I say. You want to have the upper hand on this stuff. Nostalgia can also be your enemy when the warm, fuzzy feelings you have of a game come crashing down as they don't line up with your current experience of it. One of the biggest examples of this I've seen people bring up is GoldenEye for Nintendo 64. Considered back in the day to be the real bee's knees, it's viewed by many nowadays more like the bee's butt. Actually, getting this picture, I found that there's a whole community dedicated to how adorable bumblebee butts are. Playing old video games, not such a peculiar hobby after all. Anyways, GoldenEye. The main issue is that first-person shooters have changed so much over the years that our instincts just aren't expecting what this game gives you. And even if you never played it back in the day, you're still likely to have a brain that's been trained to play first-person shooters the way more modern ones are. How you control and play Goldeneye is totally different. Perhaps the most jarring thing for most people is that the controls use a single analog stick setup, unless you go full dirty dog with the lesser known 2 controller option, but the single analog stick setup can be hard to adjust to, and the game isn't really designed around aiming as much as games nowadays are. By default, your gun will sort of auto-aim at enemies, so it's more about timing, getting into good position, and strafing out of your enemy's line of fire. Seriously, you want to strafe like there's no tomorrow in this game. But while GoldenEye has some extenuating circumstances related to the evolution of first-person shooters, 
because for some games, it is your nostalgia and your nostalgia alone that dupes you into thinking a game will be just as good as you remember it. I don't really own any games that fall into that category for me personally to show you gameplay of because, yeah, I don't keep them around. One of the other ways I've noticed games pull an I gotcha on gamers is when the difficulty of an older game quickly rains on their nostalgia parade. Maybe there's a game you remember fondly that begins to promptly whoop your sorry butt when you go to play it after many years have passed. Maybe the game is just mad at you for abandoning it for so long, like visiting a relative you haven't seen for a while. Okay, now the last thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that not everyone's nostalgia is built the same. Heck, some people may not even have much nostalgia from their youth because not everyone has the greatest childhood. It's sad and unfortunate, but it's the truth. So if you do have warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feelings, don't take them for granted and be sure to appreciate them. Joy can come at a premium, something we may not realize as kids when it can seem so plentiful. But luckily, nostalgia is an opportunity to harvest some of that joy from your past for your current life. So drink it in, nostalgia is your friend. But like any friend, you need to treat it right to really flourish. Otherwise, it can quickly become an enemy. So take advantage of your nostalgia in the ways that make you happy, check on that one, while at the same time, not letting it go overboard in ways that restrict and limit your life. Sometimes easier said than done, but that's the best advice I can give. But like always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So leave a comment down below and I will see ya in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the red